Hey, I'm Tyler Edlund. So last episode we talked a lot about my personal philosophy uh, in regards to detailing a painting. And this, this week's episode comes from a user submitted question in regards to balancing detail. So this week we'll be looking at some of the concept art from the Assassin's Creed game series in hopes to answering your question, uh, which came from the trade-off between designing atmosphere versus the detail, uh, you know, with that atmospheric depth. And they, the, the person had a lot of trouble with balancing the two, and if I had any input in regards to that. And so if we're looking at this piece of art from Assassin's Creed, a, a good example before you set down, or a good philosophy again, uh, before you begin any piece of work is to know your intention and your purpose with it. Concept artists, of course, are tasked with many different purposes all the time in regards to what they need a, a specific goal uh, to uh, kind of a hit with a specific piece. So something like this would be generally an atmospheric piece. It's probably used earlier on to generate some inspiration to capture the mood and the feeling. So if this image in particular is about the mood and the feeling of the setting of the image, we have a lot of design parameters right there. So we can narrow down basically just those elements with this piece and it every detail is implied here. If we look in if we look in at this, there's not a lot of specific detail anywhere. We don't see any detailing of this cathedral, any of the detailing or texture within the roofs. We see some hints at windows, and a lot of it's derived from the shapes. But it's all about the lighting and the mood and the setting with this. Now, if we look at the next piece here, it's got a completely different intentional purpose. Try to figure out what that is for a second uh, before we kind of move on and I spoil that. So if we just pause the video. All right, assuming you did so, uh, the intent and purpose on this is to sell a gameplay uh, feature, uh, which is very different from an atmosphere piece. So as we know in the Assassin's Creed series, there's a lot of parkour elements. We're seeing that here. There's chase sequences, and this piece of art specifically kind of sells that gameplay aesthetic. Uh, so having the detail around the characters running and, and jumping is the first priority where everything in the environment and the atmosphere is very kind of secondary and so therefore not as important and often simplified greatly. So that is a good kind of distance knowing where to put those specific details in regards to the gameplay in an image like this. Um, so that's two different um, reasons or purposes for some art. The third one, you know, in this one, does anyone have an idea what this one is? And this is depicting the, uh, the French Revolution, of course, in, in regards to this. Um, again, if you don't know what the purpose of this piece of art may be, pause and try to think of what that could be for a second. All right, so this one uh, purpose is a kind of story and narrative driven piece. It's depicting, uh, depicting a very kind of cinematic story moment uh, within this, uh, the context of the game. So of course, a lot of the detail is going to be around where the characters usually are. If a character is present in the scene, it's all about what's happening with them. And while these are fairly simplified in the execution of the image itself, it's still where a majority of the detail is placed. If you're breaking things down in terms of, I like to use the 70-30 rule, the 80-20, it's all around those kind of 2% where we want to detail about 25% of the image and, and simplify and apply the, the remaining 75% of it, putting your focus and your em 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 emphasis <laughs> where the important uh, things are. So we have uh, story and narrative, we have gameplay, we have atmosphere and mood pieces. There's three different types of reasons we can be uh, looking to get done some images. Uh, and then we, that brings us to uh, this fourth one here, which is a little bit different. Well, yes, it, it, this is like a combination of the of of a few of them. The piece with this, it's uh, it's very kind of atmospheric, but it's also selling some of the detail and texture of the world. It could be specifically designed out. I mean, I wasn't on the the team for this, but I can tell you it was it was made to capture the look and the feel of the specific alleyway of this moment. So it goes on beyond a little bit more of the mood and the atmosphere, but it's, and this can be useful for 3D artists and other people further down the pipeline in terms of how they need to design the, the level layouts, if it needs to be narrow or thin, and what kind of textures and uh, structures and props are gonna be used within the scene as well. 
So in a piece like this, the detail is more important you know, than the narrative or any kind of gameplay necessarily. It's more a, a, a lot about the texture of a scene. Uh, and similarly, uh, we have, uh, what, we're on number five now, these two different pieces of art, which are generally kind of made uh, to be designed to kind of contrast each other, to, just to show how the design aesthetics will be different. So they're very kind of diagramish in terms of execution. We're not going to use a very d dramatic camera angle or anything very cinematic, but we're, we're placed out of the shot here to look at look at this this district within the setting, uh, a more wealthy one, and how can we contrast that between the uh, the poor district. So they can be like maybe like a sub classification of, again of the mood and the atmosphere, but there's like a lot of maybe gameplay and that design aesthetic detail that are also more important than these, which is why a lot more of the specific, you know, some of the specific textures, uh, the color, there's a lot more kind of specifics that need to be into these, but putting us into that narrative, again, is not that important. Having a, a shot design is not that irrelevant with this. So really, whenever we're doing any of these types of art, or whenever we want to sit down to sit down to do a concept, we have to think of the the intent and the purpose in regards to that. This is again another good kind of combination where it's probably set, setting the stage for what we need to do a boss encounter. So we need to know the atmosphere of this. We need to know maybe some gameplay aesthetics, um, and of course narrative. So this is kind of like a combination of the the first three options we talked about, where there's a lot more kind of important things going on in both the, the environment and the characters themselves and so this was just kind of like my kind of brief kind of overview of some of the reasons we may sit down and do a piece of concept art in general and uh, I hope that kind of answered your question in regards to where do we need to put detail versus where do we need to simplify so think again the 80 20 rule the 70 30 whatever it may be and of course your intent and so I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'd love to know um, kind of your, again, your input on this. Keep your user submissions kind of coming. That's what's deriving my episodes and how I can keep these kind of short and even weekly is if you guys are submitting questions and topics for me to discuss. So thank you and uh, take care. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please leave me a like. If you want to help me out, please share it with your friends. I'm also on Facebook where I have a subscribe button where you can get newsletters and discount info. I'm also on Twitter where I update and post images almost regularly. If you want a chance to mingle, and meet other like-minded uh, individuals such as yourself, join the Brush Hosh community, free and open to anyone, of course, through the Google+. And finally, if you'd like to inquire about my mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab, scroll through, read over some of the guidelines, and feel free to check out uh, several of my testimonial videos on my YouTube channel itself.